Okay, friends, this is called a wonderful way to start the day, <laughs> especially in winter when it's hard to get moving, which I'm sure you're experiencing. I, I definitely am. So it's only a handful of pauses. It shouldn't be longer than a 30 minutes. And um, it's just designed to get like a little bit of the chi flowing through the body. Um, and hopefully, like I like to start with something like this in winter that, I mean, the intention is that it's gonna inspire me to, to move. <laughs> and even if it doesn't, it's a good practice anyway. So have your bolsters, your blankets, your blocks, anything else you need. And we're gonna start in butterfly pose. So bring the soles of the feet together, take the heels away from the groin. Now, I like to begin in a relatively easy version. So the bolster across the feet and the forehead on a block on a bolster. And what I actually aim in to do here is let the, the tension more in the upper part of the spine, so more thoracic, like up towards the back of the neck. So I want to let that area round for a little bit. So it might mean, if you're doing this with me, it might mean that you, you feel as though it's not as intense as what you're used to. Uh, just so you know that is okay. The intention here is, is that we're just really working to open the body so that prana, so chi life force, can enter into the body. And, you know, as we know, this, this life force has its own intelligence. So all our job is as practitioners of yoga is to put the body in certain positions and allow for this intelligence to, to move into where it needs to. Okay, so you might decide that that's plenty for you, in which case you can just stay here. I like to go down like a notch at a time here, so we're not really missing any areas of the spine. So take the block down then until there's more of, a, of an opening or a rounding or spaciousness through the mid spine. Essentially what we're doing there is, is just allowing for an opening through an area of the body that we, we often overlook in this pose, like we go straight into the end point like we do with everything. Essentially what we want to do is just allow for these other subtler in-between tensions, which is usually where there's blockages of energy. And then we'll move into the variation that is deeper for you. So maybe that means taking the block and the bolster away. You can feed your hands underneath the backs of the legs there. 
So long as it feels like it's manageable, you can let the head and the neck just hang free. And just notice how the tension moves now for me, like it's like the back of the thighs and into the hip joint. So you're getting that whole area through the whole back of the spine, like increment by increment. I'm going to start to move out of the pose. So again, I want you guys just to feel for rolling really slow. Keep the chin tucked under. Roll all the way up through the spine. Use the hand to help the head up. Let's just come down onto our back for a moment. It's just an opportunity to uptake the change there as you let the body ease into stillness. our way up slowly and um, we're going to head into sphinx pose so have your bolster and your block nearby so come down onto the tummy and let's start so there's a few options here you can start with the hands pressing together so that the elbows, I, always, I like this version because it feels for me like the shoulder joint is supported. If you want to bring the forearms down, you can. And of course, you can work with a block underneath the forehead. So we're going to stay there for about a few minutes anyway. We'll keep into the modified version. Remember, you can take your legs as wide apart as you need to to feel for um, a let go in the lower back. And if you want to bring your legs close together, you can as well. So it's, it really depends on um, where you're feeling tension today. And of course that changes every day. Remember the breath is super steady, there's no strain, there's no force.
And of course, if you want to stay here, you can. If it's, if it's actually feeling like it's really intense for you, you can come down a little with your chin rests in your hands. If you want to come up a little bit, take your forearms up onto a bolster or if you're working with blocks, blocks work too. And then of course there's the option to take um, seals so the arms will be straight in this, but I actually like this version as an interim, even if it is just for a couple of minutes, just to feel into whether or not um, seal really is an option. I also like that this gets into a part of the spine that neither sphinx nor seal gets to. It's like that's what we're after today, these sneaky little areas that get missed in the other pauses. We'll also get a little bit of a squeeze for the kidneys, which is extra helpful, particularly in winter. It's a bit more nourishment into that area of the body. Now, obviously, you can do any of the previous ones we've done. You can go back down to a modification or if it's available for you. Option to come up into seal for the last little bit of time. So there's many different things you can do in seal. You can have your hands really close to your body. You can take them wider. You can turn your fingers and point them back, which actually feels really nice for me today. So just work within like what's available for you on any given day which we forget changes daily we get all caught up in this linear like progress thing that we think that it's just going to keep getting better and better every day and that's kind of not the point what the practice of yoga is about really is just showing up as we are in all aspects when we're feeling really inadequate, when we're feeling really, really capable and everything in between. And we learn this adaptation of working with the body in all ways, like all the different ways. slowly slowly come on down now you can just rest down on your belly let's say you take your favorite cheek to the floor and just let the spine be neutral there so you don't need to do anything at all sometimes it's nice to bring a bit of movement so you might bend the knees and like heels from side to side you might do that And the other thing you might do is just half frog. So you've got the left knee bent up towards the left armpit. Just a few breaths there to let the spine release. And uptake the change. You 
if you've got one knee bent then we'll change to the other side just to balance out the low back Now we're just going to press back into a child's pose. Now there's two ways you can do this. Like I actually like knees close together with the forehead on a block. Arms can be straight ahead or they can be down by your side. Like just depends what feels comfortable for you. But I like the block so that I can actually massage like the, the tension across the forehead too. So I'll kind of rock the head from side to side and then I'll just pause where I feel like there's tension in the temple. And I'll hold there until it starts to feel like it's releasing. Once it feels as though it's released a substantial amount, so however long that takes, I'll move to another part. And we'll just work through these little areas. Now, if that doesn't work, you can take the knees wide, use no block, and extend the arms forward. So more of a regular child's pose situation. You just do whatever you you want to really. <laughs> whatever works. So I'm gonna stay with the knees together and again just the massaging out of tension on the temple line. So figure out how you can do that on your block, but I like to just almost have my eyebrow off the edge. And then I'll just slowly, like I'm scanning for tension. It's usually for me, like really tight across the top of the eyebrow line there. So I'll hold when I get to that point, it's like, oh my God. Almost makes you feel a little bit sick. You might decide after a little while of working with your head on the block that you can go without the block. And again, you can always lower it down a notch or take it away. I'm just going to do about five more breaths here just to feel for that let go and release through the, um, the low back, back of the body. Highly up to you what you do next. So I will be in caterpillar. Now you can take the legs wide, you can have the legs closer together, you can build all sorts of interesting contraptions. Okay, you might have the bolster across the legs with a block on, which is probably what I will do. We'll do the same thing like we did in butterfly, so we're going in in increments. I just like that. If you're not up for that today or your forward fold looks like this, 
then you might want to come into to legs up the wall now if you're doing legs up the wall have a blanket so you've just got a little bit of lift for the pelvis don't take the pelvis really close to the wall so have a little bit of a gap between the wall and your butt you can have the arms resting on the chest there or you can take the arms out to the side just like what works do what works those of you guys that have got a strap you might want to strap the legs up that's another really nice option that helps to release in the psoas too for those of you guys that are coming with me i'm going to be starting with a bolster and a block i'll put my timer on rounding 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 and again, I want to feel all of the rounding through the spine. So I want to do a bit through the upper back and then through the mid back and then through the lower back. So eventually it gets into the backs of the legs. start to go down a notch if you're doing the, the one with me you might also check in if there's space you can also stay where you are so these are all just options this practice is about beginning to understand the changing nature of our bodies and becoming really inquisitive and curious in our practice so we're not just rocking up doing the same thing and then expecting it to be different because that's not going to happen we turn up and we practice and we realize what's available and what's not on any given day and then we work with it rather than trying to change something that's not changing Start to learn the, the practice of acceptance and accepting our body as it is in the moment is a majorly, majorly advanced practice. It takes a lot of honesty and a lot of courage, often quite a lot of humility.
now we're going to start to very slowly roll out. So start with the chin in towards the chest and the rounding through the upper back. The mid back, the lower back. You need your proper way. If you're on legs up the wall, just again, take your time to come on down. Just your arms by the side and just uptake the change there. Opportunity now to rest here in final rest. Need a few more moments. Or you can just begin to move on with your day. Maybe even taking a more movement, like active practice from this point. 